When something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. Some people don't like change, but you need to embrace change if the alternative is disaster. Failure is an option here. If things are not failing, you are not innovating enough. The path to the CEO's office should not be through the CFO's office, and it should not be through the marketing department. It needs to be through engineering and design. Persistence is very important. You should not give up unless you are forced to give up. I always have optimism, but I'm realistic. It was not with the expectation of great success that I started Tesla or SpaceX. It's just that I thought they were important enough to do anyway. If something has to be designed and invented, and you have to figure out how to ensure that the value of the thing you create is greater than the cost of the inputs, then that is probably my core skill. Don't delude yourself into thinking something's working when it's not, or you're gonna get fixated on a bad solution. As much as possible, avoid hiring MBAs. MBA programs don't teach people how to create companies. We have a strict, no assholes policy, at SpaceX. It's very important to like the people you work with, otherwise life, and, your job is gonna be quite miserable. I would just question things. It would infuriate my parents. That I wouldn't just believe them when they said something, cause I'd ask them why. And then I'd consider whether that response made sense given everything else I knew. You have to say, well, why did it succeed where others did not? You shouldn't do things differently just because they're different. They need to be, better. When somebody has a breakthrough innovation, it is rarely one little thing. Very rarely, is it one little thing. It's usually a whole bunch of things that collectively amount to a huge innovation. When Henry Ford made cheap, reliable cars, people said, nah, what's wrong with a horse? That was a huge bet he made, and it worked. I think we have a duty to maintain the light of consciousness to make sure it continues into the future. I think most of the important stuff on the internet has been built. There will be continued innovation, for sure, but the great problems of the internet have essentially been solved. If you're trying to create a company, it's like baking a cake. You have to have all the ingredients in the right proportion. I wouldn't say I have a lack of fear. In fact, I'd like my fear emotion to be less because it's very distracting and fries my nervous system. Being an entrepreneur is like eating glass and staring into the abyss of death. People should pursue what they're passionate about. That will make them happier than pretty much anything else. What makes innovative thinking happen? I think it's really a mindset. You have to decide. If you get up in the morning and think the future is going to be better, it is a bright day. Otherwise, it's not. Really pay attention to negative feedback and solicit it particularly from friends. Hardly anyone does that, and it's incredibly helpful. I'm interested in things that change the world or that affect the future and wondrous, new technology where you see it, and you're like, wow, how did that even happen? How is that possible? I've actually not read any books on time management. Talent is extremely important. It's like a sports team, the team that has the best individual player will often win,
but then there's a multiplier from how those players work together and the strategy they employ. There are really two things that have to occur in order for a new technology to be affordable to the mass market. One is you need economies of scale. The other is you need to iterate on the design. You need to go through a few versions. The first step is to establish that something is possible, then probability will occur. Starting and growing a business is as much about the innovation, drive, and determination of the people behind it as the product they sell. I don't create companies for the sake of creating companies, but to get things done. My biggest mistake is probably weighing too much on someone's talent and not someone's personality. I think it matters whether someone has a good heart. I always invest my own money in the companies that I create. I don't believe in the whole thing of just using other people's money. I don't think that's right. I'm not going to ask other people to invest in something if I'm not prepared to do so myself. I don't spend my time pontificating about high concept things, I spend my time solving engineering and manufacturing problems. I do think there is a lot of potential if you have a compelling product and people are willing to pay a premium for that. I think that is what Apple has shown. You can buy a much cheaper cell phone or laptop, but Apple's product is so much better than the alternative, and people are willing to pay that premium. I say something, and then it usually happens. Maybe not on schedule, but it usually happens. If you're co-founder or CEO, you have to do all kinds of tasks you might not want to do. If you don't do your chores, the company won't succeed. No task is too menial. People work better when they know what the goal is and why. It is important that people look forward to coming to work in the morning and enjoy working. A company is a group organized to create a product or service and it is only as good as its people and how excited they are about creating. I do want to recognize a ton of super talented people. I just happen to be the face of the companies. It is a mistake to hire huge numbers of people to get a complicated job done. Numbers will never compensate for talent in getting the right answer two people who don't know something are no better than one, will tend to slow down progress, and will make the task incredibly expensive. I don't think it's a good idea to plan to sell a company. Brand is just a perception, and perception will match reality over time. Sometimes it will be ahead, other times it will be behind. But brand is simply a collective impression some have about a product. It's okay to have your eggs in one basket as long as you control what happens to that basket. There's a tremendous bias against taking risks. Everyone is trying to optimize their ass covering. I think it's very important to have a feedback loop where you're constantly thinking about what you've done and how you could be doing it better. Thank you for watching. Please like and share our video and don't forget to subscribe our channel to get the latest update.